Well, isn't this fun? Wow, welcome everybody. Um, welcome to our health seminar for tonight. Is healthy food actually healthy? And I'm excited to be here. I'm grateful to um, Crystal and Lee for hosting the health seminar this evening. I usually do them in my home where I have my practice. But this is tons of fun. I was raised on a farm, so it's always fun to come back and um, and do that. How many of you are familiar with the Hidden Pin Creek Farm? Good. Do you love their food? Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, tonight, we're going to offer a two-part approach to help answer the question, is healthy food actually healthy? So it's going to come from the standpoint from a naturopath. I'm a naturopathic doctor. And I'm going to give you my take on it. And then we're going to turn it over to Crystal and Lee, where they're going to share all the good stuff about their farm and their point of view from it. So as I said, I'm a naturopathic doctor, and I practice from my home. I, my practice is on Scenic Drive. Just um, we, were, we were discussing how close that is. It's 10 minutes if you go to the speed limit, 6 minutes if you speed limit. <laughs> <Yeah. So, laughs> we're right down by Duck Lake Road. I did it today, so I know. Yeah, so she knows. She knows. Uh -huh. I offer two modalities in my practice. I do cranial sacral therapy. How many of you have ever heard of cranial sacral therapy? A few of you? Great. It's a light touch modality that helps balance your nervous system. And it can be done on anyone from before birth to right before they're passing out of the body. And so it's a great, it's a great thing that helps balance your nervous system. Um, the second thing that I do, which we're going to talk about this evening, is called nutrition response testing. Um, nutrition response testing on your paper, I have a little bit on there if you want the actual definition. But it's a non-invasive system of analyzing a person's body. So it's non-invasive, that's really important, of analyzing the person's body in order to determine, this is real important, in order to determine the underlying causes of the ill health. Now that's pretty good to me, to be able to determine the underlying causes of ill health. And when these are corrected through safe, natural, nutritional means, the body can help repair itself in order to attain and maintain more optimum health. So that's the definition of nutrition response testing. I find it a very, very powerful modality. Um, on your, you have a paper in front of you, and first is the itinerary, and the second is like a sheet of paper that asks you about your health. So at any point, if you would like to just look at that, um, let's look at it right now. It's called public public education workshop screening form. So I want you to, to look at the first part of that. It gives like five lines. And it asks you what your main complaints would be. And we can't talk about our kids or, or, or our job, but what are your main complaints in your life? So I'm asking you if you would all just think about that. I'm going to ask you um, what is the one thing, if, I could if you could wave a magic wand, over your life, and you could make one thing go away that's actually ruining your life. <coughs> Something that you think, wow, this just really, you get up in the morning and you think about it, you go to bed, you think about it, or um, it's getting in the way of things that you want to do in your life. Maybe you want to be more active with your children and your grandkids, maybe you want to take trips that you can't take anymore. So I'm asking you to think right now, think in your mind of one thing that if you could wave a magic wand, what one thing would you want to go away that has to do with your health, your life? Doesn't matter if doctors said it could never go away, doesn't matter. So everybody has something in mind maybe, maybe? So I want to tell you a little bit about when I was younger, how things ruined my life or came to ruin my life and how it pushed me into becoming a naturopathic doctor. So when I was in um, high school, I decided to stop eating uh, breakfast and lunch. And so I was only eating dinner. 
And at that, it wasn't very much. I would come home in the first, from having done sports and having done um, walking the distance from home to from school to home. And uh, the first thing that would come out of my mouth was, "Mom, what's for dessert?" So I was real into sugar, and that was probably my favorite thing. Don't know if any of you have ever had that in your life, but um, my, my favorite thing to eat was sugar. And so by the time I was a senior in high school, from, I'm assuming it was because I was eating like that, um, my joints started to hurt. So I'm only, what, 18? And pretty soon my joints are hurting. I had to drop out of track, couldn't run anymore. And um, then later on, I, I became ill with chronic fatigue, and that was real difficult. I couldn't remember that I even had kids in my house. That was a scary thing. My energy level was next to nothing, and I somehow got through that. And then later I was um, diagnosed with Lyme disease, and that was a huge hit on my body. And I remember um, being very aware of that. I was a health. Um, the medical director at a, at a survival school, and I was aware of what Lyme disease looked like. Uh, the kids would, about oh, three to four kids a, a summer would come down with Lyme disease, and so I was very familiar taking them to the ER and having that, that diagnosed. So when I had that happen, um, it hit, hit extremely hard. I couldn't get out of bed anymore. I couldn't walk and I, I felt like there was a, a beam stuck in my head. It was just constant, serious pain. My joints hurt, uh, even just to touch. And my thinking, what was left, had completely gone. I had to drop out of school, uh, college, and um, it, took, it took me down to a space in my life with the inability to think and communicate, people would talk to me, and I couldn't come up with words to be able to respond. It was extremely embarrassing. And I remember um, uh, just coming to a space within me and saying, this is life. This is what life is. And you get real humble when you can't think. And so that was a real impact on my life. And so then uh, I have uh, a son who was then diagnosed with juvenile diabetes and type 1. And I would say that was the thing that pushed me over the edge, that I said I've really got to get serious and decide what it is that I can do to help my life and, um, and help my son's life. And that would be, in my opinion, the impetus that pushed me forward to become a naturopathic doctor, to be able to help others in a natural way, to be able to get your health in order, to be able to not have to rely on the medical drugs and intervention as much as possible. And so as you can see, I'm making my way back. I can now put a couple words together. I can walk. Um, my joints don't hurt um, when I'm really stressed, then I get a little joint pain. But for the most part, I am, I am getting better. But I would have to say the one thing that helped me the most, the one thing that helped me the most that continues and continues and continues to help me is nutrition response testing. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. I travel, I travel to Ann Arbor every other week to see a practitioner who does what I do six minutes away. And so it's helped me. It's, it's a very powerful, powerful modality. It was created by a gentleman by the name of Freddie Eulin, who's a chiropractor, who he himself was 23 hours in bed, very ill, and he needed help. He didn't know what to do. He couldn't find help that was getting him anywhere. He finally um, he put together, he studied Chinese, Japanese, and German medicine, a little bit of American, put together things that worked, brought his health back to now when people come into my office, I have a video of Fred Eulen playing, and he looks pretty darn vibrant, wouldn't you say, when you yeah. see him? He's a beautiful man, and he has done um, incredible amounts for people, for humanity. So when he had his practice in upstate New York, and he was... Um, 
he was better now and, and his clients were getting better using nutrition response testing, the MDs and the DOs started sending their, their family to him. Uh, and so they were getting better. And so then at nighttime, when nobody would see, the doctors would come and have Freddie help them doing nutrition response testing until there came a point when the doctor said, would you please teach this to us so that we could do this for our clients, for our patients. And Freddie said yes. And so many of us have been trained, many doctors have been trained to do this, nutrition response testing. So I'm going to tell you something that you probably don't know. Maybe some of you do know. Um, um, I'm visual, so I'm going to just draw it up here. So I want you to know this. Can everybody see my little arch? Kind of, sort of. It's, ju it's just a poorly drawn half circle. <laughs> OK. And so this right here is 70%. Can everybody see that? 70%, maybe I should hold it up. Can we hold it? No, that's okay, thanks. So 70%. <clears throat> so did you know, did you know that by the time you have symptoms, usually takes between 20, for adults, usually between 20 and 40 years for a person to start to experience symptoms. Now we have little babies and young ones who are experiencing symptoms already, and that's a whole different story. We come about Pottinger's cats, about that. But for the average adult, it takes about 20 to 40 years before you start experiencing symptoms. By the time you experience symptoms, about 70% of your organs are on their way out. People don't know that. How many of you knew that? Maybe one of you. Good. Yeah. Terry knows that. He knows that. So that's a very important piece of information, wouldn't you say? Oops, 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 oops. So by the time, by the time your body is experiencing symptoms, 70% of the <coughs> organs are already on their way out. <clears throat> So what would you say if I told you that with nutrition response testing, we could, we could change, we could turn those symptoms around, not in 40 years, not in 30 years, not in 20 years, or even 10. But with nutrition response testing, pretty consistently we're able to turn the symptoms around in one to five years. That's pretty good. Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you agree? That's pretty darn good. That's why Freddie Eulin used it. That's why people came to learn it. And um, that's why I use it. And I feel very, very honored to be able to offer that to, to our community. And so this right here is the symptoms. This is what people you generally come to their doctor for. Or this is what they suffer for sil with silently. Whatever your symptom is. And so when you come, you can see there's a triangle here and down here is called nutritional deficiency. And over here is organ dysfunction. And so <clears throat> the way that it works is I look at the deficiency that's happening to your body nutritionally. So when people, you can put sugar up here or bad food, but this is symptoms this time. So. When a person's body is deficient in nutrition, the organs start to dysfunction. Does that make sense? That makes sense, good. So the only thing that the body needs, the body, as well as water, etc., but it needs whole, whole food. Whole food, that, what is whole food? Whole food is when you pick it, you grow it in the garden, you milk it, that's whole food. It's the way that it was when, when it originated. And so what I look at is I look, you come to me and we find out what's the nutritional deficiency. Hello, Katie. This is Sophie. <laughs> yeah. um, so nutritional deficiency will absolutely cause your organs to dysfunction. Then you come up with symptoms. And it's just a big cycle. I'm going to say, Sophie's a patient of yours. Sophie is a patient. <laughs> yeah. 
better. Yeah. It's better. Yeah. Um, so this is what happens. So when you come to me, we need to break this cycle. Wouldn't you agree? So I want to I want to find out what is the nutritional deficiency, what organs are dysfunctioning, and over time the symptoms just disappear. So when you come to me, I don't I ask you what your symptoms are, but that's not what I'm even looking at. I'm finding out what's going on down here. And sometimes it's it, it's a it people start noticing a reduction in symptoms quickly. Sometimes it takes longer. Depends on how far down this you've gone. So. When you, come to, when you come to me, we don't cover up your symptoms with duct tape. How many of you have ever experienced that? Symptoms being covered up with duct tape. What does that mean? That means you go to someone, maybe you go to your medical doctor, you go to somebody with symptoms and they say, oh, we can do something that will stop those symptoms. That will kind of cover that over. We'll make, we'll make, we'll make that, uh, if you're draining, you have a, a you know you have a lot of drainage coming out. You go to the doctor. They give you something to stop that drainage. They they cover up that symptom. When you come to me, I go, oh yay, well done, you're draining. <laughs> right? Yes. It's coming out of you. Well done. <laughs> That's really great. So just like you wouldn't drive down the road and your and your check engine light comes up, you wouldn't put a piece of duct tape over that, right? Which is what happens a lot in our medical community. I, I, um, with us, we don't cover up the, the symptoms. We are trying to find out what's causing it. Or we are getting to the core of it. Um, so real quickly, I want to express what we do with nutrition response testing. And I'm going to eventually ask a volunteer to come up. So hopefully somebody will want to volunteer and come up. So what we do in nutrition response testing is we're looking, I have all my little drawings. <coughs> when a person comes to us, there are areas of their body that, that may be um, not functioning optimally. And when they come, we're actually looking for different categories to be able to see what's causing, what might be causing the issue. And so just real quickly, we have common foods is a big one. For those of you who come to me, how many of you have experienced common foods being a huge issue? Hey, yeah. So common foods, which Crystal and Lee are gonna talk about, what's, wh how, what does the quality of food have to do with how well you are? We have immune challenges that we look at. Maybe you have a virus or a parasite Maybe you have bacteria, maybe you have fungus going on in something that's actually causing the issue. We look at metal toxicities. Who can tell me where we get metal toxicity? Filling. Pardon? Fillings. 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 Mercury. Anybody else think of metal toxicity? Water. 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 Deodorant. Fish. Fish. All sorts of places. Where you live, what you breathe. Uh, chemical toxicities, where would we get chemical toxicities? You can think of that. Everywhere. Everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> Those smellies you put into your, your socket to make your house smell fragrant. Those are, actual, those are actual chemicals, toxicities. Um, what you put on our skin. What you put on your skin, that's a big one, Karen. That's a huge one. You can get it from food, too. I mean, pesticides. Absolutely. Yeah, you can get, you can get it big time from food. You can get it hugely from the food, yeah. And so the last one is scars. Scars are something that few people are aware of that can actually cause your nervous system to not be operating optimally. You have a nervous system, and when you have a slice across that, the impulses can gather in that scar and cause all sorts of dysfunction. So this is one of the biggest ones that we have. Freddie Ulin says, if you don't handle the scars, don't handle anything else. It's that important. So these are the things we're actually looking for. We're not looking at a Band-Aid. We're actually trying to find the core. 
of what's going on with you, why you have those symptoms. And so I'm going to ask, um, let's see, who's not a client and who would like to come up and come on up. Very good. Thank you. Yay. Okay. So tell me your name again. June. June. Is it okay if you're being videoed? I don't care. Okay, good. <laughs> so June, can't, tell me where the camera is. <laughs> so June know, knows my parents, and so I, I recognize them right away. So, so June comes to me, or June June has some symptoms that uh, that she's dealing with, and she comes and she tells me what they are, and I go, thank you for telling me. And so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually see if I can test her. Is June testable? And so just like the pediatrician does and did when you took your children to them and they used a rubber mallet, remember that when they hit your knee and the knee went like this? Do you guys remember that? The leg went like that? So that doctor was actually testing the integrity of your nervous system. Did you know that? Few of us know that. And so that's what the doctor's actually doing. They're seeing if there is a connection. So you have your brain, yeah, most of us, right? You still have it. Usually. Down your spinal cord, and then you have all, all the nerves that shoot out from your spinal cord. So you have messages coming out, going out here, you touch something hot, the message sends back, right? So there's a circuit. We all agree with that? There's a circuit that goes from your brain to an external or to an organ and comes back. So I'm looking to see if the circuits are broken. That's what your pediatrician was looking for. Is the circuit broken on Johnny? When they hit the leg, bam, great. When they hit the leg and nothing happens, that's a red flag. Because the doctor says this circuit is broken somewhere. We all agree with that? That's what that doctor was doing. Okay, so I don't have a rubber mallet, could get painful so in my testing, so I choose to use a locked muscle. That's what I choose to use. Instead of a, a reflex, I'm using a different kind of an area. So I'm looking to see if a muscle has the integrity to lock. I'm not looking to see how strong you are, just simply what the, what the integrity is of the muscle to lock. And so I'm going to ask June, if you, do you have any shoulder issues? Mm, no, not really. Good. Okay, so you're going to face me. And so have you ever done this before? No. Good. Okay, that's always the most fun. So arm comes out and you keep that elbow straight. So again, I'm not testing to see if she is strong. I'm testing to see if her nervous system has the integrity to have a locked muscle. Okay, so I'm going to press down and you're just going to match my pressure. Okay, so match my pressure. Good. So, she's, there, there should be a, a slight sensation, maybe, right about right here. So match my pressure again, June. So where do you feel that? Down here, up here? Up here. Good. That's called a lock. What's that called? <coughs> a lock. Good. Very good. So let's do it again. So match my pressure. Good, you feel that? Good, what's that called? Lock. Good, so she's got that down. So the way that we can tell if we're accessing the nervous system is we have a pole with our finger, positive and negative. You can use anything. You can, you can actually do it anywhere. But for ease, I don't use the hammer, and I'm not trying everywhere. We just press on the arm, and I'm going to now put my finger right here, if, she, if you'll let me, That's right here on the bridge of her nose, and on one side, we have the lock, good. And on this side, I break the circuit and her arm goes down. Just like. <laughs> did you feel that? Yes, so, I did. So match my pressure, good. And then I switch it around and it goes right down. So am I, are you trying? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So let's try it one more time. So there she has a lock and then I switch it over and it just drops right down. So that tells me that I'm accessing June's nervous system. So then the next thing that I do is I want to find out what area of her body is actually stressed. Okay? So what I'm going to do is if I we use we use reflex areas. 
to access different points on her body. So if I press on that area and that area is stressed, that's the same as when the doctor hit the, the thing and it doesn't go. So it tells us that there's a lock, or a, a, um, the circuit is broken. So again, tell me if I, if I touch on a certain area on June's head and the arm drops down, that's the circuit is broken. Do you get that? So if I press on her head and her arm drops down, what the circuit is what? Broken. Broken. Good. If I press on this area and the arm stays strong, is the circuit broken? No. 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 Good. So here we go. So I'm just going to go to different areas of June. Do you mind if I do that? No. no. It's a little too late now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm testing different reflex points on June and waiting for for the arm to go down. So the arm went down in that area. And so that tells me that this area that I just tested, that there's a stressor there. The circuit is broken. And I want to find out how we can help that. So what we do with nutrition response testing is we use whole food supplements. Um, how many of you have ever seen a deer eating out in the woods? Yeah? How about a rabbit? Have you ever wondered why they don't die from what they eat? They only eat the good stuff. They, they only eat, but how do they know what the good stuff is? It's an innate intelligence. Your body knows innately what to eat. So a lot of times people say when they bring their children to the grocery that um, the child just starts picking. And I'm not talking about Doritos. I'm talking when you're in the, the part of the grocery, that ha the outside of the grocery store that has the whole more whole foods. Children are, have been known to pick the foods that they're needing. That's an innate intelligence. That's how the rabbits know what to eat so they don't die. And so we have products made um, by Standard Process, and it's a, a company that grows their food, they process it, and then they, they send it right to us. It's the whole food. It's the whole package. And so as opposed to synthetic supplements, how many of you are familiar with synthetic supplements? A few of you. So have you ever heard the word synthetic supplements? Synthetic supplements are when the people in the lab take this part and this part and this part and then they put it together to make something that your body no longer recognizes. So we're using the stuff that your body recognizes. So I'm just going to try something on June real quickly and I never know what's going to show up on people. And so, I don't know, let's try this, June. Okay, so if her body likes this, what do you think will happen to her arm? Lock. It'll lock. Good. So, arm goes out, and I really don't know. We'll try this one. You're just going to hold this for me. Good. So, match my pressure. Good. And so, we're going to go back to this point that her arm went down on to match my pressure. So, I can't push down any harder than that. Her arm locks. So what does that tell you about this product? Her body wants it. Her body wants that. And so I'm going to show you something. So I need you to hold this one. And the arm goes up. Good. Let's check this one out. So I match my pressure. And her arm goes right down. And so what is this called? <coughs> This is called, I can't read it, I'm wearing glasses. It's called prostate PMG. So do you think that June needs that? Probably not. So the point being that your body can tell what it needs. Does June have a prostate? We don't think no. so. So her body wouldn't need it, is what the point is. Thank you, June. Appreciate that. Yeah. So, so that's how we do what we do. People come, we, we um, look for areas that are stressed, and then we figure out what it is that they're needing to help. you want to explain real quick how, the, how that works? Like how the, what works? Like the sunshine through a window? Like the Can do that, the absolutely. Yeah. So whole food has energy to it. Do you guys believe that? Yeah? So the sun has energy. You're by the window, and the energy comes through, and you feel the heat even though it's that distance away. Everything has measurable energy. And so when we put this up 
against a person or an area. The body can tell if it wants it or not, the energy of it. And so that's, that's what that is. And so... Yeah. 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 Looks like I can just hold it and you'll be fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you hear her? She says, it looks like you could just hold it and be fine. Um, <laughs> so you walk around with all your <laughs> um, um, That may be true to, to a degree. However, it's really good to help start fixing the organ problem that we're having. So, but, but why not, right? Why not wear your, why not wear your supplements? I think people that would tape them to their body. Take them to their body? Yeah. There you go. If you're trying to say, you know, cut back. Okay. <laughs> if you're trying to cut back, is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> so again, I want to emphasize that this is not a band-aid to cover symptoms. It's actually finding the root cause, the root core of something. Um, today, I, I didn't know if you, if you knew this, um, there are more American children on some form a pharmaceutical drug than ever before. You guys aware of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to make you aware. All in the attempt, what, to control the child in some way, to help some kind of issue that they're having, they're either too lo loud, they're too wild, they come two times, an hour and a half each. The first one is called an initial consultation, and I get information from you, I do a real thorough body scan, then the second time you come for an hour and a half, I write up a report of findings. Those three hours with me, that's normally 150, when you come here, you get it for 45. You're welcome to just come in here and get the scan if you want. But for those of you who want to go a little step further, there's no obligation whatsoever. But what have you got to lose? Just telling you. If you have something that's ruining your life, if you want to be healthier for yourself, for your grandkids, for your own self, I just encourage you, raise your hand at the end and we'll just go real quickly in there and I'll give you a two minute scan. If anybody wants to go while we're doing this, that's fine too. Oh, I, that's okay. We'll wait. I, I want them to okay. see what you have to do. <laughs> so, so I want to thank you for listening to what I do, but I want to turn it over to Lee and Crystal, and um, I love what they offer. Their food is great. Has anybody ever had their goat's milk? <laughs> I've never had goat's milk before till last week. That is like eggnog, I'm telling you guys. That is really good stuff. So thank you, everyone. Appreciate